Well, I think there's a wee bit of a misconception that when you're a freelance artist, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> um, but I think the reality is that you often find that you're working with lots of different companies and organisations, all who've got their own uh, ethos, their own aims and objectives, which you have to adhere to um, when you're delivering the work um, for those organisations. Um, and in terms of um, challenges, um, I think um, financially it can be a challenge and um, so not only are you having to book yourself different work opportunities you're also having to manage them you have to know how to keep all your receipts how to deal with tax knowing what your tax allowances can be um, and you, you're basically an administrator as well as being a creative artist so I think that can be a challenge for some people the, the flexibility that people can have in their work lives, I think is a, is a major attraction. Although as Rachel said, um, you know, it is hard work to, to juggle all the, the potential um, routes to employment um, and, and being able to take some sort of control as to the artistic aspects of, of what you're doing um, can be good. And just, having, just building up a portfolio of really broad experiences um, it's, you know, it's a major attraction. You also need to have really, really good communication skills, as in the direct communication with potential employers as well, um, because there's nothing worse from an employer's side sitting, waiting for a week or 10 days to get a response from somebody when you want to move a project on. So it's important that, you know, um, any responses are made really quickly. You need to be really organised and um, you need to have a clear plan um, for what you would like to achieve um, before going in. And that plan, you need to identify how you're going to deliver the work, not just what you're going to deliver. Um, and it's almost a case of imagining how the, how the class would actually play out before you get there, imagining all the different things that could happen, the different scenarios, and being ready with different tools and techniques which might help um, with any situations which come up. You need to understand um, the levels of ability within the room. You need to be able to read the people within the room, know when it's time to move on, when it's time to change direction to do a new activity, um, and also know when it's time to like lift people's energy up and when to bring it back down again. Um, and being able to sense um, when you've got a class that's with you. Um, or if, if they've lost you and you need to slow the pace down. And being okay about making mistakes um, and having fun with that as well, because that's all part of the process. If you're having fun and you're making mistakes and you're learning along with the young people. Yeah, that's the thing about making mistakes, in order to be able to deal with that, you have to have a really high personal skill level. Um, you know, musically, you have to know what you're doing to be able to be as adaptable as, as, yeah. as you're saying as well, I think as well. Um, and just having that kind of engaging personality that, that just pulls people in to yeah. your enthusiasm as well. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to reflect on the work that you've delivered um, and yeah, knowing what's gone really well and why it's gone well um, and what's maybe not worked quite so well and how you could have changed it or how you would take it forward if you had the same group for another session. You also have to know when you've lost a teacher if you're in a school environment, um, because you have to have staff on board as well, and it's not just about the you know the, the pupils in front of you or the, the young people. Um, you, you need to have a teacher on board as well and be able to deliver the information to the teacher about what you want done or what they can do to enhance the, the session as well. Um, I think it's really important that everybody is continuously learning and whether that's about going along to training sessions, workshops, courses or actually just being able to self-reflect on the work that you've done and identify um, what have been successes and weaknesses um, as well as constantly building up your repertoire, learning new tunes, new materials, learning from the pupils, learning from the other tutors or the musicians or artists that you're working with. Um, I think it helps keep things fresh, it helps keep you focused. I've kind of summed this up in three words basically, which I think are quite important um, traits to have. So we've got reliability, imagination and flexibility. Um, yeah, we offer uh, different work placements both for uh, school students and also for college and university students. Um, so uh, people can get in touch with us and let us know what they would like to 
uh, learn um, and then we'll put together a programme of different activities for them to take part in um, and that's really um, on an individual basis depending on what people want to get out of the placement. Um, we have also got the opportunity for people to shadow um, different tutors who are out working as well so um, people can get in touch and we can organise things for them. Folk would just have to contact me um, through High Life Island and we would certainly consider any sort of mentoring or shadowing opportunities.